I knew that I wanted to be an artist from the time I was eight years old. I had a teacher in third grade, and her name was Miss Carlson. I've told this story often. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I would finish my work, and I would draw. Well, she took my drawings, and she gave me my first one-person show outside of the classroom, you know, in the hall. And she invited my mother to see it, and she said to my mother, take this child to the Art Institute and sign her up for classes. My mother was extremely supportive and really appreciated the arts. She was a musician. So we went to the Art Institute and we went to what was then called the Junior School. Um, and it must have been after registration and all the classes were filled and oh, I was just heartbroken and I was probably kind of crying as we left the museum. And a guard said, what's wrong? And my mother explained the situation and he said, well, there are these classes for members of the museum for their children and they're called the Raymond Fund classes. Well, you know, it was just really fortunate because I started in those classes and went all the way through high school because there were also scholarships. You know, of course, that the Harry Who shows were at the Hyde Park Art Center. Jim Nutt and Jim Faulkner had an idea that it would be uh, a good opportunity for us as artists to show in a smaller group. Uh, and so he went to Don Baum and he proposed having an exhibit of five artists, myself, Art Green, Gladys Nielsen, Jim Nutt, and Carl Worsom. So that, that's how that all started. Instead of a catalog, we had a comic book that we created. We made the posters for the show, and um, we installed it together. And the first show was in 1966. And it was so successful that we had two subsequent shows, one in 67 and one in 68. We had free reign to do to create our show any way that we wanted to. And we did sort of what I would call early installations. In one show, we covered the, the walls with flowered linoleum. Uh, we had another show, we, we hung yellow price tags off the corner, the bottom uh, right-hand corner of our paintings with prices like $99.99. We had uh, cases full of our very precious thrift store finds. We were not a collective because we didn't we didn't work together. We didn't have, you know, any sort of political agenda at all. <laughs> we, it was just about the work and about creating these shows together. The openings were so, so much fun and so exciting, and some people attribute it to the punch. <laughs> I wasn't much of a drinker, so I never uh, imbibed on it too much, uh, but it made a lot of people very happy, I think. Oh, I had two little babies at the time. So I was a young mother, I was really busy. I had, a, uh, let's see, my son was born in 65, my daughter was born in 68. So I was busy mothering and busy painting and, you know, in the 80s. I taught for museum education at the Art Institute, and I developed a program, I piloted a program called Mini Masters, and I worked with four and five-year-old children, and we would go up to the galleries and have these amazing discussions about art, because children really look at art. I also did a program, which was very, very interesting, for the Department of Children and Family Services. Um, there was a man uh, who worked for DCFS, Sidney Goldberg, and his idea was these were not after-school classes to entertain children. These were classes where if someone, if a child was really interested in playing the violin or learning uh, to paint, that they could continue, they could take this class and they could take it over and over and, and develop. I personally taught a class at the University of Illinois Medical Center uh, children that were in the, in the psych unit, and I used to call it <laughs> I used to call it my Sunday morning church in the sense that it just felt so good to be doing it. So I would go in Sunday morning with my supplies, and I would meet with these adolescent uh, aged uh, youth, and 
you know, we basically did the same thing we would do in any art class. And I think teaching, maybe because I've had such wonderful teachers, I think teaching is a wonderful way of giving back, um, to be able to inspire somebody else, to give them permission, to inspire them, is, uh, means a lot to me.